everyone. Can I get a good evening back? <laughs> Thank you. I know uh, you all are a little bit uh, sleepy, but just bear with me for some more time. So thank you for showing up. It's uh, really good to see all these faces. And uh, welcome to the beautiful city of Canals and welcome to DrupalCon Amsterdam. Thank you for joining in the <coughs> session. The topic for my session is, let's take the best route, exploring Drupal 8 routing system. So I have um, made this presentation with the help of symphony.com and drupal.org and uh, try to bring uh, the best of both of the worlds to uh, make sure that it is a good presentation. And I would be starting from a very basic level and as I progress, I would be using some introductory examples and some screenshots to make sure that uh, the session is well understood and well received by you all. So introducing myself, my name is Surbhi Srival and I work with Srijan Technologies. On Drupal I go by uh, the name SURBZ or you can search me in my complete name to locate my profile. On Twitter, I go by the handle Surbhi Srival. Don't forget to take this conversation live using my Twitter handle. So at Srijan, I am primarily involved with Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 <coughs> projects, which also means that I have worked with teams wherein we have designed systems which have used various flavors of Drupal. And uh, Talking about Srijan, so uh, Srijan is a 15 year old company and uh, when Srijan started it was uh, mainly involved with a lot of non-Drupal stuff like ROR, <coughs> Python, Django, but 4 to 5 years later Srijan got its hands dirty with Drupal and now 8 to 9 years later we have a good Drupal name with uh, 200 plus people primarily focused towards Drupal, making us Asia's largest Drupal boutique. And uh, Srijan has its headquarters in India, New Delhi, and we have colleagues working all across the globe. Okay. So before I sort of begin, I would like to just set the context right here so that uh, we are well aligned on what we are actually uh, going through the presentation while I scan through. So this is sort of an agenda. <clears throat> I would be starting from an overview with the help of an introductory example. We would be seeing the underlying mechanism of routing, that is HTTP kernel, how Drupal 8 routing is different from Drupal 7, wherein Drupal 7 was using hook menu how Drupal 8 makes uses of YML and controllers. We will also see structures of routes, simple access checks using permissions and roles, dynamic routes using params and routes. And I would conclude this session uh, with, the help of, uh, with the help of a basic summary of what we have talked about. So let's begin. So um, this picture, what it uh, signifies? Anybody from the audience? A car. A car, <laughs> yeah. And? A road. Okay. Okay, so basically uh, you can see a car is uh, traveling, right? So it is starting from some sort of a starting point and reaching some sort of a destination, right? So taking some path in between, right? <coughs> Similarly, we all have uh, traveled to this uh, DrupalCon Amsterdam, right? We might have taken same path or we might have taken different paths. Okay, so similarly in Drupal, a path is defined as a way which returns some sort of content. <laughs> For example, if I say slash node, which is the front page of a basic Drupal installation is a route, slash node slash edit add, which opens up a node add form or I can say node edit page which opens up a node edit form is also a route. So most of us uh, might have got a chance to work with MVC frameworks, right? Many of them and some of us might have also worked specifically with Symphony, right? 
for those who have not got a chance to work with symphony this slide is a very basic slide which outlines how a routing works with symphony so if you see in symphony there is an app controller then there is config directory and then we have a routing.yml file so blog show is a route and which is mapped to path slash blog whenever slash blog is hit then controller name is called and method is involved this is how uh, routing takes place in symphony <coughs> and if i talk of drupal 7 so uh, when we work with drupal 7 uh, then routing is handled by a function hook menu and in drupal 7 this function not only handles routing but it also handles access uh, controls visible navigation so a lot of responsibilities are handled by this function okay and uh, so there is a table called menu router which <coughs> stores all the paths and as soon as the request comes in that path is fetched from that table and the corresponding request is fetched so for those of you who have not got a chance to uh, dig deeper into this table we can just do that right now So let me just show you. <coughs> so I'm going to use a Drupal 7 database. Uh, this is uh, what the table is actually formed of it has fields which are path then access arguments access callbacks so all these are basically uh, defining the structure of a table So if I see what this table has in store for us, this is a, a storage section pulled out from this table. So you see, so in Drupal 7, uh, this concept was handled by menu router table and anybody who is coming in from an MVC background, this sort of a concept was a uh, alien concept, right? We were not much aware of what was happening behind the scenes. <laughs> so. Drupal 8 brings up some sort of a transparency wherein it says goodbye to hook menu. So if you see on the screen, this is a very basic implementation of hook menu, which was there in Drupal 7, but Drupal 8 is not using this at all. And Drupal 8 has said goodbye to hook menu. So what Drupal 8 uses then? So Drupal 8 has borrowed its uh, routing mechanism from Symfony and it makes use of HTTP kernel. If you want to locate this uh, kernel, you can just go on to your Drupal folders. Inside that is a vendor directory, then is a Symfony component and you can just dig deeper into the code. How it works at a conceptual level, I can uh, just explain you right now. So we have a block diagram here wherein we have four blocks. The request block which is generating some sort of response so let's just understand it by focusing on the request block first wherein a request is coming in and this request could be a post or a get request which is uh, coming in from a desktop or a mobile device and a response is being generated in the form of html or json and if a successful response is generated, then the status code is 200, else we have a phone on your page. So HTTP kernel is taking in this request and it is generating this response. But to do that, it is making use of some other systems, right? And what are these other systems? So these are YML files and controllers, which we will see further in the session. Whenever a user is accessing a path, then Drupal basically checks if the requirements are being met, that is the permission and the role 
are correct and uh, the requirements are being met, then a successful response is generated else we get a phone out for page. So let's just talk about these other systems which facilitate uh, this response generation. So we have routing file and we have controllers. Talking about YML file, so YML file is nothing but it basically tells Drupal how to behave whenever a particular request is encountered. So this is a very basic implementation of a routing file which is taking uh, module name dot routing dot YML as an ex uh, naming convention and this route is mapped to the path slash example. So whenever slash example is hit, permission access content is checked and if the accessing user has the role of an administrator in this case, then example controller is called and content method is invoked. And what are controllers? So needless to define them, it is basically a piece of code which generates some sort of response object. So this is a very basic implementation of a content function which is generating a simple hello world markup and we can place the controllers in src controller directory. Very basic. Now just expanding on a structure of routes. So we just had a glance at what the YML file has uh, at a very basic level. This is a sort of an extension of that wherein I have uh, kind of extended the requirements. So if you see the requirements section, you would see there is permission section and there is role section. So I have separated permission one with permission two with the help of a comma which defines an odd operation and role one is being separated from role two with the help of a plus which defines an and operation. So just to explain this, whenever a user is accessing slash example, if he has role content writer and content moderator and has the permission of access content or access user profile, then this path would return true, example controller would be called and content method would be invoked. But systems don't just function on static routes and we do have dynamic routes. So this is a very basic implementation of dynamic route where slug is a wildcard placeholder and it can take up any values until and unless defined but uh, here I have defined slug as en or fr so if a user enters the value of slug as en or fr then this route would return true and block show function would be called. One thing to notice here is that only the second argument of the path can be dynamic so we cannot do slash slug slash block that is actually not permitted and we should only keep the second arguments of the route to be dynamic. Then there is also something named params in routes wherein if anybody wishes to use the complete entity type then he can do that. So user is the name of a complete entity type and if uh, somebody over here enters a user ID and that user ID is existing in the system, then in the controller you would be presented with the complete user object which you can leverage and do any sort of uh, coding to the help of that. So if, if that is the case when the user exists in the system and if the user does not exist, then a 404 page will be returned. So this is a basic implementation where ensure user function is taking the user object and returning some sort of a markup. And here in a dollar user, you would get the complete user information, which you can use for any sort of uh, coding into your system. This mechanism is also known as upcasting. And if you want to uh, go into much more details, then you can refer to this link on the screen. One thing to notice here is uh, while I was just trying out these things on my local machine, some of the changes were not actually reflecting into the system, right? So uh, this is because there's some sort of caching is being held. And uh, if you want to just uh, make sure that the changes are reflected and you don't want to even clear the caches, 
but you just have to reveal the router information and you can take uh, the help of these useful commands so if you use drush you can use drush environment drupal service route to build a rebuild and if you're using drupal control then you can use drupal router rebuild command am i talking too much right okay now let's conclude this talk so just to summarize the steps uh, to follow when we define a route name attach a path url to it decide this url has to be static or dynamic if dynamic then we might use to sanitize these values because they are not sanitized by default which we can do with the help of some regular expressions like we can define those values to be integers so that user cannot enter any malfunctional strings and at times we may want to restrict the access which we can do with the help of access uh, checks we have seen that symphony uh, is somebody who is using http kernel and drupal has borrowed its mechanism from symphony but drupal is obviously capable of doing much more which symphony is not uh, which is uh, with the help of uh, entity types we can leverage the complete user object this is one other things like access checks defining permissions routes and uh, yeah Drupal 8 has decoupled the very tight coupling which was present in Drupal menu or Drupal 7 where hook menu was responsible for a lot of functions behind the scenes I have pushed this code to this repository in case you want to have a look you can check this out and uh, just to um, I just read this quote somewhere technology connects us and technology unites us and technology amplifies our power and at a Drupal community it can be seen well wherein we are already supporting a lot of people to learn motivating them and achieve something really really good so just a clap for that and uh, we should just keep doing uh, more of this motivational stuff and the fun just does not end here i have another session on uh, render api in the same room after this session in case you wish to join that you are most welcome and uh, join us for the contributions. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>